disagree with that, but I think the quote is good. Rex Flowers, Washoe County Cab. This was on our agenda. It was open to the public. We had no public comment against the bear hunt. Um, we accepted the quotas as they were written by the department. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Schroeder, the Nye County Advisory Board. Um, we as well had pretty in-depth discussion on the bear hunt. Normally we don't tend to make recommendations on stuff outside of our little Nye County area, but due to the controversy over the bear hunt, we talked to the biologist. We all we voted unanimously to go with endowed recommendations. Their proposed quotas we thought was based on sound science and we all agreed. Members of the commission, uh, I'm speaking for myself, but you did ask a question on this bear report and, and scientific studies, and I just want to say uh, a study is not science until it's been peer reviewed. And in in medicine, a lot of people want to have a small number, and they report a certain drug works, but unless it's reported by peer review, and like New England Journal of Medicine will not publish anything until it's been peer reviewed by these two groups, Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, or something like that. And then it's gold. And so if you read it in the New England Journal of Medicine, you can believe it. So I think this, I haven't read this report on Carl Lackey, but it's got to be peer reviewed, and if it holds water then, then it's gold. But until then, it's just a study by some people. See, a lot of people want to do scientific studies to get their name in the press. It happens all the time. They, they do a certain procedure and they say this works for macro degeneration or something like that and it doesn't work. So any study you do in there should be peer reviewed and put it in gold and then you don't have any controversy on if the study is valid or not. But that's how scientific papers work. And since you asked that question, I wanted to okay. clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Can I miss something here? I mean, are you asserting that, uh, that the bear article that we're talking about was not peer, peer reviewed? It has not been peer reviewed because it's been done, to, from what I gather, it's been done by the authors. And I don't know if it's been peer reviewed or not, but it's got to be peer reviewed before it's, it's gospel. Now, I don't know, maybe you can tell me it's peer reviewed, but from what I heard from Dr. Moldy, it was just from a study that was done by uh, some people at the University of Nevada, but if it's been peer reviewed, then it's, it's, it's gold. I'm just telling you that. It has been peer reviewed. Thank you. Walls with the email, so I'm And then the other, 
Tony Lawson, for the record, the article in question was published in the pages of the journal Wildlife Management. Um, it's one of the foremost journals in the field of wildlife management and is subjected to a rigorous review process through the editorial board. And, um, anything published in that journal, as well as a suite of others, um, once they go through that process, they're considered to be peer reviewed. Um, and to reiterate um, Dr. Dixon's comments, um, I, would, I would hate for letter that Mr. Lackey uh, submitted in response to those questions to be interpreted as an indifference to those questions. Um, I really think that the proper menu for that discussion would be the pages of the peer-reviewed journal in which it was originally published. I think that a lot of the issues of debate um, have been issues of debate uh, for a couple years now, and I think that seeking third-party resolution to those might at least create the perception of a more objective you with some of those questions and concerns. Thank you. Who's up next? You are coming forward, sir. Uh, say that uh, you know he was talking about the birds getting trash and things like that and uh, to, therefore we should do something about that. Uh, bears are very harmless all the way from the grizzly bear to the teddy bear <laughs> and uh, from Alaska to the South America and uh, the only time they become dangerous as if you bother them. And then, uh, but uh, like uh, Raquel Arthur had something to say about the religion of the Native Americans. <clears throat> this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. <clears throat> Just like she, like she said about the Black Book, which was written by the Freemasons 5,000 years ago for Christ. But ours has been going on for centuries and centuries, which we respect Mother Earth. See, and we respect all life. So anyway, uh, I myself wish all of you really good luck in choosing the right uh, kind of voting power that you have in order to protect or alleviate the bear population or whatever is on your mind. And I wish this from the bottom of my heart that you do it with the Creator and the Mother Earth. That's the way I look at it. Thank you very much. For the record, Joel Blake's the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife. Um, several of our members are working on a conservation project right now, so I'll just speak to the Coalition and, and recommend that we go along with the Department's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Those are all the cards that I had specific to the bear issue. Anything else? I have a comment on tabs. And I have, uh, I spoke about the letter that uh, I received and responded to during the testimony. Uh, can you give us, <coughs> they talk about mortality, you have additive mortality, and when do you swap over from, you know, just mortality that doesn't have an effect on the depopulation to an additive mortality? For the record, Larry Billings from the Department of Wildlife. 
Um, I guess just to kind of put this current quota in, in perspective, I guess, um, it hasn't changed. It's the same quota, 41 and, and 4, with a target objective of 20 bears. And I'd like to remind everybody that that, that quota was developed around a population estimate that's now five years old. That quota was developed around the 2008 population estimate that we're talking about being published. And at the time, you heard someone mention today about the 16% rate of increase per year. There, there's a, two ways that we could have used that. And the way it was used is we, we set the quota for the first time in 2011 to the 2008 population estimate. With that annual rate of increase, we could have increased that initial population that we're talking about 16% for two more years. And, and we could have done the original quota estimate based on in excess of 300 bears. Instead, we kept that original estimate in 2008, and that's what we set the quota on. That population estimate is now five years old. Since that time in 2011, with a lot more data collected, uh, both through harvest, through our road kills, through our uh, research work, we've expanded that population estimate to represent the entire area that we're, um, we have bear hunting now identified in a, in a unit group. And so I think that just shows that we were you know, really conservative. We didn't increase the bear uh, quota uh, last year based on the, uh, the, uh, the new population estimate from 2011. Again, it, it stayed the same. It's five years old. It's the 2008 population estimate. The 16% annual rate of increase that was identified at the time through program mark uh, what we did with that, people seem to think that that's, the, the whole bear hunt is dependent on that. What, what my bear biologist did with that was show that with that particular rate of increase, at that point in time, with that population estimate, if that continued, we could actually harvest 40 bears and see no change in the population estimate. Again, that was a two-year-old one already at that time wasn't increased up to 20, 2011 for that first time. So there, there's your first step of being conservative. We didn't even update the population estimate to increase bears up from the 2011 hunt. And then we took that number 40 and to be safe, we cut it in half. And to further be safe, we looked at the highest hunter success rate in the West, which is Utah, I believe it was 44%, to calculate the tax. And for instance, if we use some states have as low a hunter success, like 10%. So if you wanted to take 20 bears at 10%, you would have needed 200 calves. So to be conservative, we, we started our hunt with a very conservative, conservative hunter success rate of 44%, which kept the, the quota down to 45. And following that, you've seen that we have not reached even the prediction of 20 bears. We killed 14 bears the first year and 11 bears the second. So the second year, it's only 27% of our success instead of that 44. So the bear hunt you're looking at today is based on a five-year-old population estimate. And our, and our most recent estimate is in excess of 400. So um, it's we feel very comfortable and very safe with the quotas we have right now. OK, I have some follow-up questions on that. Say there was a. 30 foot fence between us and California, and those bears could not move back and forth. With the population estimate we have and the reproductive rate we have, would, these, would our bear population be self sustaining? Well, the challenge with that is we, we can predict and measure recruitment rates in the bears, but we can't exactly separate out how much of that is from local production and how much is immigration to California because as you pointed out, our bears are connected to California and so we have a constant interchange going on there. So, so then what we use in our management plan are criteria that other Western states look at um, in their bear hunting. They look at uh, the percent of females in the harvest, 
the age classes. So they're looking at sex and age class data. And as you uh, press a population like lions or bears harder and harder, what you'll see is a, a shift from male harvest to more female harvest, and you'll see a shift to younger age classes. And so those are the criteria Western, other Western states use to uh, reduce their quotas and reduce their hunts. And they start seeing a shift in the sex and age ratios, then they make changes in their hunting strategies to reduce harvest until the population reproduction starts filling in and, and the, the herd start, uh, bear population starts building back to uh, you know the older age classes and the, the more even distribution of sex. So we have that in our in our management plan, and that's what we're going to look at. It's been pointed out today that our harvest numbers are low, and so you couldn't do it just from our straight harvest numbers. That was one reason my bear biologists recommended that we look at at least three years, so we have three years of data. But we're not going to look just at bear harvest data. Obviously, we collect lots of data from all the bears that die each year and from the bears that we handle and the bears that we capture for research and mark. So we're going to use all of that data to look at the health of the bear population, not just harvest like some states do, to make future recommendations on maintaining the bears, the bear population in Nevada. Okay, as a follow-up to that, with the rate of take we have to the hunt currently if we match out to 20. If we had a quarter of three, or we had a population of 350 bears in the state and we took 20, Going into next year, would you think there'd be less than 350 or was our rate of reproduction? Are we going to exceed that 350? So that's where I'm trying to get. We have added take mortality. By the rate of take we have, are we reducing our overall bear numbers or our rate of take still allows for the increase in overall bear numbers we're seeing back? Well, currently at the, the latest population estimate was 456. So currently it'd be really unlikely for the harvest of 20 bears to cause any kind of a major decline in that population. And the, the other issue is what number of bears would you want to have if the population estimate's 456 or whether, even if it's 260? Um, so no one's answered that question. Do they want 10% more bears or 10% less than, than when, what year? So, it, it depends on what, what this process decides. Do you want to see bears continue to grow and up to what? Up to what level? Or do you want to reduce bears over time to some level? That hasn't been decided either. We've been managing bears like we do most big game species in the state. And we're allowing them to, to come up to population numbers based on carrying capacity and the condition of the habitat at the time, and as we all know, the Great Basin that changes a lot from year to year, so it's not a fixed number. But on most species other than elk, which as we've heard a lot of discussion today about population objectives for elk, we have those down hard, so we have to take a lot of females to reduce elk, to try to reduce them back down for those population objectives. We haven't done that with other beginning species in Nevada, and said that we want to manage them at a certain level. So our goal right now is to allow bears to expand in their historic habitats, at least on this side of the state, which they pretty much, it looks like they, we were finding bears in just about every little mountain range. The first one's out to the east of, of the Carson range. So we're seeing bears back in places they were reported historically in the 1800s. So now the question is gonna be, where do you wanna go from here? Um, how far out do you want them to go? And I guess I would suggest that if I think this commission, if they decided they wanted bears to go further than the current distribution, there are maybe some other interested parties in the rural counties, and you may want to ask them to uh, bring them into the discussion right now. So, you know, if we're going to plan for more bears than we have now. But that hasn't, you guys haven't decided if you want bear numbers to go way up or stay level or go back to some other level. I guess a, a good way to look at it, 2007 was brought up today, and that was an exceptional year. But we had <clears throat> over a thousand bear complaints that we had to respond to that year. And I guess 
if we were making the decision today, how many bears do you want in Nevada? And it was 2007, and everybody was all concerned about a thousand bear complaints. I would suggest that perhaps that level that we started with in 2008, 250 or 60, maybe that would have been too much because we had a thousand bear complaints. Lately, there seems to be more support for the bear resource in Nevada. So if we have the discussion today, perhaps we want a lot more than 250. Maybe we want the current population estimate. Maybe we want it to be even higher. I don't know. So I, I think that's a, a tough place to go next. But I think that's the decision that people have to make. How many bears do you want? And that will answer your question of <clears throat> what level of har harvest do you want? comments were directed at the uh, adjustment of the California population estimate. Um, and so I've got a couple questions with regard to that. First of all, did uh, California place any restrictions on the current in the uh, California Nevada border limits? Not that I know that nothing has changed over there. Um, so by a over the counter? Uh, yeah, basically they, they mostly sell packs over the counter. I have some Preliminary data from California indicated their bear harvest went up to around 1,900 this year. I think their population estimate is just under 32,000 at the current time, but it's not finished. I think it's based on some preliminary uh, return to the harvest. So I think the bear harvest actually went up this last year. The second question was uh, if the Nevada study uh, rely on the California popul population estimate or on independent data? For the the Nevada, the Nevada state population estimate. Nevada uh, population estimate. Yeah, that's a peer reviewed study. Did that rely on the California population estimate or on independent data? Yeah, it was just, it, it was totally based on data that we've collected over the years on our study. We've been studying bears since 97. It's one of the longest going, ongoing studies of black bears in North America. So we've collected a tremendous amount of information about Nevada bears. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple things. You know, we're talking about the uh, <coughs> science involved in this particular study and uh, the study of, of bears and the quotas herein. I don't think there's any question in my mind that we are sufficient um, as far as the bear population would have been shown. In fact, if anything, this quota is dramatically lower than what the population could. Uh, demonstrably support. Um, if nothing else, just simply be observed and tagged bears and the numbers of bears that have been harvested that have not been tagged. It's amazing that we don't get you know, the harvested bear, almost being harvested bear tag tag. Show this is a huge wildland population. We like that we're underestimating. Can't really predict that. Um, to the degree part of the department already has. But we are in good shape I think the bear population, I'm hoping that next year this will be significantly higher number, simply due to the fact that the science price support it. For a reason I would say this year we should stick with the current quota is the commission three years ago when we started, first meeting, kind of came up with a non-binding, call it a gentleman's agreement, how you want to put it, that you know Pick a number, stick to it three years, see where we're at, and move on from there. Unless things change between now and the next year, more than likely, uh, this will be won't be sufficient at that time as far as for it. And therefore, I'd be uh, ready to make a motion to move to approve 6151, 6251, and the corresponding combined uh, uh, harvest objective. As proposed by the department. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and second. Commissioner uh, Drew. Yeah, just from a discussion standpoint, um, I don't have a problem with the motion, but just to get on the record that the department is still planning on conducting the mandatory indoctrination courses and incorporating in uh, the presentation given by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to make sure our hunters are aware of uh, the closed units, the tribal lands. 
I believe that 100 doctor nation was identified in the signature process, and so it's set forth, and, and uh, we definitely <coughs> can go forward with the 100 doctor nation. Um, and also on our hunt map, that should be coming out in the hunt book that will be published shortly. Uh, we're working with our GIS specialists to make sure that the Indian lands are uh, shown in a decent color. The, the map last year, there were some colors that were kind of close to of the colors for people like me that are partially colorblind. So we're going to put a uh, uh, brighter color so that they stick out this year. And, the, and Larry, the BIA will be present in the indoctrination? Uh, I know they're invited. I can't guarantee you. I believe they were there last year, and they're certainly invited to come there and present their uh, concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and stay there, Larry. I don't know what you're doing yet. Uh, before we vote on this, I want to review the last two years' hunts. And uh, with the take of 14 and 11, and the age structure of the bears that were harvested, and what that gives us an indication of. Uh, and then a follow up question to that if we had seen a dramatic drop, you know, first year you had the age structure, if we had seen a drop in the age structure, what would have been the response of the department uh, at that point? If we saw a dramatic change in age structure from the first time to the second time? Like the second hunt, suddenly uh, the hunters couldn't find anything but females and there were young females or something. Uh, we would have definitely identified that, obviously, because we identified what we find. And uh, it, it would have expressed that that, that is a, a concern to see that change. We would have also compared that to, like I said, all the other data we collect, because we handle a lot of bears. We're doing some, we're handling some for research, we handle the bear complaint bears, that, that we either have to euthanize or tag and let go, and all the mortalities that we document. So we look at all the age and sex structure of the population based on the biggest sample we can get. But what I suspect we'll do this year is give you a picture of all those things. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a harvest picture just because, um, you know, it's new and, and, and that's something we'll continue to track forever is harvest. And like we do on mountain lions, we'll give you a picture of it. But because on bears, we collect so much more data, you know, on most of our other species, we don't collect all the road kills and go look at them and see what they are. We just don't have that kind of man, man time. So we spend the extra effort on bears. Uh, we don't have bear, we have bear complaints that we address and, and we handle bears that way. We have a lot of complaints on elk, deer, antelope, other things, but we're not out there handling all those and putting tags and marking them and letting them go. I mean, we handle so many more bears, such a higher proportion of our bears than we do any other big game species. But we'll, so we'll use all of that data to assess the uh, sex and age structure of the population. So if, if the harvest had really looked bad, we would have told you it looked bad, but then we would have told you what the whole sample told us. And it could be an artifact of the low quota and the low harvest. And we would, we would suggest that that's what we thought the problem was. Obviously, a lot of hunters at the current time are looking for a, a bigger bear and the larger ones and trying to get males. And so it should be biased toward males, which it is so far. But um, when it comes to the point where they can't find males or something, you know, that's when other states get concerned. But I suspect we'll see it even quick, more quickly, because we're handling bears all summer long before the hunt ever even starts. So we should have a feeling if we're seeing a change in sex and age structure, even before the bear season actually starts, we would have a feel for it. So, you know, we had a, if you saw a big change in sex and age structure, you would not have uh, requested the number of tags that you did. If it didn't match the, the whole sample. If the whole sample told us that, um, every, all the bears we handled told us that we had a drastic change in age and sex structure. We would have come forward and told you we need to make a big change on the bear quota. Uh, if the season had already been set, we would have likely recommended a really small quota, really tiny one if we saw that big change at a couple of bears or five or something really small if we thought it was that big of a risk and, and otherwise. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. I, I don't have a question. 
Mr. Chairman, I just have a comment okay. regarding the vote. I am, as a public member, I am the one that voted uh, against the proposal to um, hold the quotas as currently exist. I do want to say that I understand what the commission is attempting to do at the time. So within a three-year period that they can go back and review it. But you know, I've made my comments before on this. I think everybody pretty much knows where I stand. It looks like you have a gauge structure right there. Mr. Brad, do you have a gauge structure up there? What we are this week? Yeah, for the, uh, the single sow that was killed, she was a 12 year old, and, uh, and uh, the average for the males. Uh, for the 10 males of 6.3. Is that your question? And that would be a considered an unsure bear at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. Commissioner McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Larry, you were talking about the carrying capacity earlier. Do you have an estimate of what the carrying capacity is uh, for this current year? Yeah, uh, if you were looking at this particular year with the uh, light winter and, and predictions of a dry summer, obviously carrying capacity uh, would be reduced this year. So if you were making recommendations based on that, you would probably want to uh, reduce the number of bears this year um, so that they, they don't have to uh, all be subjected to the, the more harsh conditions. But, um, you know, we don't do that necessarily for any other big species either. Sometimes we've addressed it with antelope a little bit. When we get antelope up to population levels that we think are going to tax the winter range, um, we actually increase those dog quotas there. Um, we don't do it for hardly any other species, so um, I'm not sure we would have made that recommendation just based on weather. But we all keep our fingers crossed living in the desert and hope to get rain and that all the critters will, will benefit from that this, this summer. I guess I, I asked the question more in the sense that, uh, um, you know, I appreciate the discussion on the additive and the compensatory, um, uh, the, the concept, um, trying to understand the dynamics of the population. And, um, obviously, that's uh, a big goal, I and mean, we want to continue to get better at that, continue to understand it better and better. And that, you know, it's, it's at what level are we at now is really where we're all trying to decide. Um, probably the audience, I, I know, I suspect up here, at what level we're probably all at varying levels, even though some of us might agree on, on the issue. There's probably a level of uh, difference in, in uh, where everybody's at on the scale. And, and uh, um, I'm not sure how to close that gap. Uh, we've got a lot of data, there's no doubt. Um, we've got uh, a lot of information being put in front of us. Um, I wish there was a way to bring two polar opposite thought processes together. Um, I do appreciate uh, Director Wasson's comments. Uh, um, I hate that it could take, or it might mean, um, submitting information to a third party and, and having it uh, uh, looked at in a, in a, from a review standpoint, from a, a publication standpoint, and a rebuttal process. But I have to agree, it, it seems to me like it takes some of the subjectivity out away from all of this and puts it into a a little different world, or maybe there's a little level of comfort um, with, with that whole concept. So, um, for me, there's still there's still uh, questions in my mind. Um, you know, I don't want my comments to be construed as not uh, being supportive of the department's uh, data, but at the same time, um, you know, some of the concerns that I had last year with the immigration and immigration. Um, the hunt units uh, that was brought up, um, that's, that's for a different meeting, I understand, but uh, uh, the other sex thing, uh, understanding that there just hasn't been a lot of issues resolved for me from last year, and I'm, I'm not quite willing to uh, go into that either, so uh, I won't be supporting the motion, but uh, um, I sure hope that we can find a way to move forward and, and uh, close the gap. We're not all going to come to complete agreement ultimately, I'm sure, but uh, all of us
this up here, all of us uh, in the room, period, we've got to find a way to get around this. And uh, I do feel like we're at least having more of a discussion than we used to in, in some respects. I think that there's been a, a slight step forward that way, and I hope we continue with that and uh, continue to bring through this. <coughs> I had forgotten earlier to acknowledge that I have received quite a bit of correspondence on the subject through email and through the address the commission did, and I thank people who did that. It was split basically between the zero quota and quite a few in support of the police keep the quota where it is, and then going to the couple of that for I want to thank people who did send those. I did read every one I got, and I would very pleased to see that they were all pretty, pretty unique emails from people uh, from Nevada, and thank you. Appreciate it. It's very helpful.